Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. And now, here is your host, Michael J. Mayer. Hey, everybody, this is Michael J. Mayer with another episode of the Referrals Podcast. Not referral. We're not talking singular referral. We're talking referrals with an S, multiple, multiple referrals. And today we're talking about taking your business to the next level. We have the level jumper himself. Like this guy is terrific. This guy is powerful. And I will tell you, we've got Mike Simmons here today. We are excited to have Mike Simmons as our guest on today's show, the Referrals Podcast. He is the co-owner of the wholesaling company, Return on Investments, producer and host of the popular podcast, Just Start Real Estate, and a partner to Seven Figure Flipping, one of the nation's largest real estate mastermind groups. Mike currently owns 16 rental properties and wholesaled and or flipped over 80 properties, not in his career, not over the last 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen, last year, he flipped over 80 properties. Most recently, he wrote a book titled Level Jumping, How I Grew My Business to Over 1 Million in Profits in 12 Months which tells the very true story of his success as a real estate investor. In addition to his incredible business, Mike has shared the stage with such an impressive list of people as Gary V, Ryan Sirhart, Sirhan, excuse me, Jocko Willink, Russell Brunson, Walter Bond, Andy Frisella, and Tom Ferry, and now Michael J. Mayer. Oh my gosh, it's a crazy, crazy, <laughs> crazy stage sharing day. So I will tell you, we need to welcome this guy to referrals podcast mike simmons welcome to referrals podcast listen that was an awesome awesome introduction i'm humbled i'm happy to be here i'm excited i can't wait to dive into it i think we're going to talk about some awesome things so I'm, I'm looking forward to it yeah like who doesn't want to take their business to the next level that's right you know and and you're and i have to tell you the whole level jumper uh, there, there is a, there's a, there's a whole logo. There's a whole thing on level jumper. I just, I just see this like level jumping becoming uh, a, an adverb and a verb, you know? And, and so what does it take to go from a solopreneur to a business that can, that can run without you? Like that's how somebody said the other day, right? They were like, um, what would it take for you to reach your 10 year goal by the end of this year? Which is, isn't that a great question? Yeah. And the first thing I was thinking is hire, hire talent. Like hire was the first thing, you know, leverage with, uh, you know, people, systems, technology. And it was just the first thing that just flipped into my mind was, was like hire. But, but I want your take. You know, what does it take to go from a solopreneur, which are so many people, that to a business that can actually run without you? Yeah. And you hit one of the key points right on the head. It is hiring, right? Mm -hmm. So what we have to realize is if we want to grow our business and we don't want to be a slave to it, and even if we do want to be a slave to it, well, there's, a, there's a finite amount of time. Now, some people are more productive than others and some people make more with the time that they have and that's great. But no matter how optimized you are, it still runs out at the end of the day. So if you want to take your business beyond that point, or if you just don't want to have to be in it 14, 15 hours a day, you do have to hire, but there's a step that comes even before that, in my opinion, the way I was able to do it, the very first thing that I would suggest to people is in one way or another, you need to surround yourself with people who have gone beyond where you are that can give you some of their hindsight. And I mm -hmm. say it all the time to people, if you can find people who are where you want to be, or they are further down the road than you are, and they're willing to sit down with you and be honest and open about what they did, if you can use their hindsight is your foresight. Wow. Imagine mm. the power in that. So you talked about your 10 year goal in one year. Well, find someone who's 10 years beyond you, or they're at your 10 year goal. And if they'll sit down and give you some of their time and lay out what they did right and wrong, by the way, and you can avoid those landmines. That's exactly what I did. I found someone who was 
four years ahead of where I was. They had the business that I wanted. And I said, mm -hmm. how did you do it? Right, wrong, what, what happened? What are the things you wish you had done? What did you do that didn't work? What did you do that did work? And they laid it out for me, abundance mindset. They gave me their playbook and said, this is what we did right and wrong. And I said, well, if it took you four years to do it organically and sort of figure it out and make mistakes along the way and have no guidance, why can't I do that in one year? Mm. I should be able to do that in one year, if not shame on me. And what I did was, and what I always tell people is, if you find someone who's kind enough to sit down and give you kind of their playbook of what they did, don't you ever let the first words out of your mouth be, yeah, but, mm -hmm. right? Do not be a yeah, butter. Mm -hmm. If you ask someone their opinion and they're qualified and willing to give you that opinion, you need to implement. And I implemented like, it, my life depended on it. And I, I did do what they did in four years. I did it in one year. It wasn't all perfect. I made mistakes. It wasn't entirely pretty, but I did it and I got to my goal in one year. So to your point, you can absolutely compress that time, but it really, I think, helps a lot if you find a mentor, a mastermind, somebody who can kind of help you along the way do that and tell you what they did right and wrong. That's what I was going to say is, is you need a mentor, you need a mastermind. And in many cases, a mastermind is a, is a mentor, right? Mentor yeah. type of environment. And, uh, you know, I, I see this, you need to go from a yeah, butter to a level jumper, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's yeah, but, or, uh, you know, even, I even sometimes get that from my son, you know, it, it's just like, here's the suggestion. And he's yeah. like, yeah, but, and right. it's like, dude, I have played a lot more baseball than you have. I've coached baseball for years. Maybe you just try it, you know, yeah. but I'm dad. So, you know, yep. nobody listens to dad. Absolutely. So. And the key, and the reason why I call my book Level Jumping real quick yeah. is everyone talks about going to the next level, right? You mm -hmm. can go to the next level a lot of times without help. But sometimes it does help to have that, that assistance, but to skip a level, right? Remember when you were a kid and you wanted to go up the stairs fast, you would go two at a time there you faster. Go. That's what I'm talking about in business. Surround yourself with the right people, masterminds, mentors, and you can skip levels because of their hindsight, which becomes your foresight. Yeah, I love that. Uh, their hindsight becomes your foresight. And, uh, you know, they say hindsight's 2020, uh, which allows you to have a much clearer vision yep. for your future if it's your foresight, you know, and you get to hopefully miss their mistakes. You know, you, you get to not make the same mistakes they did. And so what are some of the things that you learned from the mentor that uh, you implemented uh, immediately? And, and I, I have a quick question before that, just out of curiosity is how much did the mentor, how much did the mentor's business go down in the year that your business went up? Uh, hit zero, his business yeah. went up. Yeah. So you're telling me that out of his abundance mindset. Yeah. He, he, he didn't lose by sharing with you the knowledge. Not one bit. As a matter of fact, I find people who are successful, really successful, have abundance mindsets. That's usually the most generous group you're going to find. It's the people who are small and think that they're, they're guarding some secret, which is never a secret. They never know <laughs> right. anything that's that important, right? right. Um, but those, those folks with abundant mindsets, it always comes back, right? You give and you get back. It just happens. I don't know how it just happens. And his business yeah. grew exponentially too. So yeah. um, great guy. But your question was, what did I specifically do? What did I yeah. learn? What did I implement? Yeah. A couple of very key things, right? I'll tell you what it wasn't though, real quick. Cause this is what I, people intuitively think it was. They think that I got some turned onto some software, some yeah. app, some yeah. tool. It wasn't any of that. What he taught me was when you're growing your business, you need to systemize and you need to create processes. I didn't have processes. At the time, I was a flipper. I was flipping houses, and that was my primary mode of, of building my company. And every time I got a house under contract and I was going to flip it, I would go to Home Depot, I would repick out new flooring, I would repick out paint, I would repick out tile. Everything I did was like, a, like it was as if I'd never done it before. There was no efficiency at all. I had no economy of scale, none of that. So what I learned was, I need to create a system that's repeatable and a process that I can document and give to folks as I bring them onto my team. Because prior to that, if I was working with folks, I would go, well, you know, this is what I do here. And I would like, it's like, mm -hmm. I'm passing it down like an American Indian and that's fine, but that's not the most effective way to do it. Right. It needs to be written down. Right. Yeah. And I also learned that over bloated manuals 
by the time you finish them, you need to redo them. So we started creating more of bullet point uh, instructions for people. So they kind of understood what we did at a very high level. So systemize, create processes. And then most importantly, you said it from the beginning, I need to start building a team. Mm -hmm. If it was just going to be a team of one, I was going to be very limited in what I could do. And the fact of the matter is what I realized was when you're an owner and you're doing everything, you become adequate at things that you really don't like doing, but you're mm. not a superstar. Right. When you can start building a team of people who have specific skill sets, who sit on a specific seat on the bus, and they're really great at that, each, each department or each phase of your business will become exponentially better. Case in point, I would go out on appointments, uh, talk to sellers and try to get contracts. And I would go out there and I am a very, very, uh, average salesperson. Maybe that's even generous. I'm passable, but it was my business and I'm passionate and I'm willing to do anything. So I would try harder than the average person might. But at the end of the day, I didn't realize how incredibly like average I was until I brought a salesperson on my team who was really, really good. And by the way, he wasn't from the real estate industry. He was, he was a pharmaceutical salesperson, right? So just totally different industry, but his superpower was sales. And when I gave him the leads, and the things that I was using to try to get deals, his close rate was significantly better than mine. I would have to go on six, seven appointments to get a, to get a contract. He yeah. was going on like two, maybe three yeah. to get a contract. So no more money spent, no more effort, but way better results. So once I started getting better results, the revenue came in. I'm like, you know what else I don't like doing? I don't like answering the phones. I don't want, I'm not good at it. So if I don't like it, I'm probably not gonna be good at it. Hired someone to answer the phones. Now I have someone answering the phone, someone going on appointments. Now I can crank up the marketing. My revenue's coming in. I'm not doing these things that, frankly, I would procrastinate. This is bad. It's embarrassing to admit, but the phone would ring. I'd let it go to voicemail mm -hmm. because I had to psych myself up to get in the mindset to call them back because I didn't like doing it. Yeah. Now I have someone answering the phones. So now I don't care how much marketing I do because I'm not answering the phones anyway. Somebody good at it is doing it. And then somebody great at sales is out there doing sales. And so it was just like this flywheel that started spinning for me. And I was able to really, that was, those were the main things that helped me grow. And then staying in contact with people who were kind of where I am and, and beyond. Because in my small bubble, especially in my family, nobody was an entrepreneur. Nobody's encouraging this. Matter of fact, every time there was a little bit of a challenge or a little bit of dip, it would be, oh boy, this is a lot of risk. You sure mm -hmm. you, maybe yeah. you should go get a job. You know, it's like that yeah. kind of, it's, it, they love me and they're trying to protect me, but it's negative. So I, you have to surround your people with, yourself with people who are positive, rowing in the same directions because there will be challenges. And it's great to have someone to bounce ideas and thoughts off of. So how'd you find your sales guy? Great question. He found me uh, yeah. from my podcast. He reached out, he was local and he's, he wanted to find rentals. He wanted to build his rental portfolio and he was new to real estate. And he said, if I take you out to lunch, can I pick your brain? I said, sure. So we go out to lunch, he's picking my brain and I find out through the conversation, like he works for this pharmaceutical company. He's their number one regional salesperson. They were getting ready to send him to Hawaii, all expense paid because he was the top regional salesperson in his company. He was a killer, but he was so good at his on the road, local on the road sales route that he had all kinds of time. Like he would be playing video games in the middle of the day because he was crushing his job, mm -hmm. getting awards and he had free time. So he's like, after we were done talking and I kind of answered some questions for him, he sent me an email. And what he did in the email was he recapped our meeting point for point, what we talked about, and then pitched the idea of working for me for free to learn the industry. And he's like, I'm a good salesperson. I really think I can help. And I got him out there on the road for me. I did pay him because I didn't feel right not paying yeah. the guy, but I gave him commission, but he started crushing it. I mean, uh -huh crushing it. And that's how I yeah. found him. And, he, and here's the great thing. Here's the key to all that. He had a full-time job. He was making a lot of money. He had tons of free time. He didn't need my money, but yeah. it was bonus for him. So I only paid him when I got paid. It was straight yeah. commission, right? So how do you afford a great salesperson? Pay him. Put him on commission. Find someone yeah. who has a day job that has the, the capacity and the bandwidth to work for you on a part-time basis. Yeah. And, and also when talent arrives at your door, open the door and let yeah. them in. You know, you could have you could have just been, oh, you know what? Nobody can sell my stuff like me. Nobody can do it like me. Or, you know, I'm not comfortable with somebody representing me. Or, and it's like all this head cheese that's going yeah. on. And it's like, you know what? Just say yes. Just bring them on. Let the talent run through the door. And and then, I mean, you know, I have this saying that I would much rather rein in a Mustang 
than kick a mule. <laughs> and, and it's like I a like lot it. of people hire mules because it's easy, yep. you know, just bring them on and the mule will just, you know, but the problem is sometimes the mule gets stubborn and won't move. So you got to kick it. Right. Exactly. And, and the flip side is a Mustang, right? Mustang's a little scary. It's a little, it's a wild Mustang. It's pretty, pretty free spirited. It definitely doesn't want to send you its time block. It's yeah. going to be one of those where they're going to be going and all you got to do, like you said, for them, for him to represent you, you just needed to rein in the Mustang a little bit. You just needed to give him some systems, some tools and, and some guidelines yep. and he, and he would run with it and, and keep going. You don't have to motivate him on a daily basis. He's already motivated. He's already driven. He's a wild Mustang. So we need to, you know, we need to look at hiring Mustangs for certain, especially sales positions. Totally. Uh, versus versus you know mules and having to kick mules and mo if you have to motivate a salesperson, you probably have the wrong salesperson. That's a great tip. You're absolutely right, and I have found that as well. I've hired salespeople that I had to motivate. They weren't motivated. And to my credit, when he reached out to me that time, I wasn't looking for to hire a salesperson. Right. Right. I was just so impressed by the guy yeah. that I said, I need him on my team. I need, to, so you should yeah, it's almost, I would be stupid to say no, you totally. know, that's kind of where it comes, but people yeah. say no to that, Mike, you know what I mean? I mean, they, I they have this opportunity and then they're just like either through a scarcity mindset or, or just fear. Most of it's just simply fear, fear of the unknown. How would I use them? What would I do? You know, it's like, well, you know, figure it out. Yep. And trust it, trust, trust the process. You should yeah. always be in recruitment mode. You should always yeah. be looking for talent. Yeah, always. And so what, why do some entrepreneurs fail while others succeed given the same opportunity? You know, this is kind of an opportunity where he came to you and, and like you took it, right? But in general, why do some entrepreneurs fail while others succeed given the same opportunities? You know, you and I both have been in this for a while. You've talked to, I'm sure, thousands of people at this point, if not tens of thousands. I've talked to a ton of people. It's become very apparent to me that success isn't necessarily a measure of intelligence. I've mm -hmm. known some super intelligent people that were highly successful. I've known people that weren't traditionally like considered like highly educated who were wildly successful. So it's not the smartest people who win. Yeah. It's the, it, we touched on it earlier. The common thread that I see through everybody who's had success, no matter what it is, it, it could be health, it could be exercise, it could be business success. It always is the person who's willing to take action. Mm -hmm. People who absorb, absorb, learn, learn, and then the yeah, but we talked about, right? When you give yeah. them advice or when you try to help or whatever, it's always yeah, but, or procrastination. And I, I suffer from procrastination. I'm a recovering procrastinator. I, I'm always fighting that, but the people who allow that to take over never succeed. Right. So, mm -hmm. and, and by the way, I'm a huge fan of Jocko Willink. You mentioned yeah. him at the beginning. I shared the stage with him. Extreme ownership. That, that is a mantra for me in my, in my life. Now, it, people who blame outside factors, the government, uh, their job, their boss, their wife, their kids, their dog, whatever, what, if you're a blamer, if you're a pointer of fingers, and that's how you explain your failures, you will probably always be a failure. Honestly, it sounds yeah. harsh, but you will. So it's, it's the people who take action, the people who hear something, they, they take in some wisdom, some education, some knowledge, some advice, and they immediately implement it before their brain starts telling mm -hmm. them all the things that can go wrong. They just go out there and get, go for it. Those are the people who succeed. Sometimes it's it's the people who are, are blissfully unaware of, of sometimes the things that could go wrong, right? Yeah. I always tell people, if you go to a lawyer, not to bag on lawyers, but if you go to a lawyer and ask them if you should do something, they're almost always going to say no, or they're going right. to scare the bejesus out of you before you do it. Right. So if the people who are sort of blissfully unaware of all of the factors that could go wrong, but they've educated themselves enough to keep themselves out of major trouble, those are the people who end up succeeding every single time. Yeah. What are some adjectives you would use for that type of person? Like, how would you describe the successful versus the unsuccessful entrepreneur? What are, what are, what are like they're action takers, but what else? Like, what are some other? Um, high risk tolerance yeah. People with high risk tolerance are always yeah. good. People who are positive people yeah. who, and this is sounds optimism, kind of, right? Optimism is huge. Yeah. People who are givers, I find yeah. succeed at a higher level than mm. people who are takers or people mm -hmm. who have that scarcity mindset. Abundance, yeah. right? They have yeah. abundance. People who are willing to help other people, right? Mm -hmm. Giving in that, in that same vein, I think that's huge. And the people who don't succeed are always the finger pointers and the naysayers and the excuse makers. If you, make, if, if you find that you're blaming someone else for things that go wrong with you, 
I'm, I'm really worried. And, and like for my kids, I've tried very hard to instill that. Do not ever blame yeah. somebody else for things that go wrong, even if yeah. it seems like it's them. Yep. Find your part of that and how you could have changed it. Because trust me, yep. there's something you could have done. Yeah, I love that. I love that. In fact, I'm going to cover that uh, tonight with my son because you reminded me is that uh, what if you could help every player on your team have a good game? Would that help? You know, and and like you look at the flip side, it's like, well, we lost because blank had a bad game. Okay. Well, no, you, you could have done more. You could have hit a home run every time you were up. You could have made no errors. You could have whatever it was. Yep. But the, the other flip side too is, is, you know, a lot of times before the game by how you praise people and build mm -hmm. them up, they will play better, you know, and, and I want Max to be an encourager, you know, and, and I want, you know, there's the blamer and complainer, and then there's the, the encourager and the one who you, takes credit, takes charge, takes, you know, takes action. Yep. And it, it's like, uh, I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to go into that and change the energy of that whole team by yeah. the way you act. Right. So it's, that's right. right. That's right. And um, so what are some of the lessons that you learned uh, about hiring and scaling your team? Yeah. So this is the referrals podcast. So I will say yeah. I have found the best hires are usually the ones that come from my team. People that refer, go. I know somebody that's, you know, friend of mine, I've worked with them before, whatever it is, those are always gold because they understand your company. They understand what you want when they bring someone into the fold. Number one, they refer to them. They understand their skill set. But number two, that person who referred them has a vested interest in the success of that person. They don't want to look bad, so they're going to help. They're going to go out of their way. And you start getting this momentum of helping and encouraging and supporting, and uh, that's huge. So that was, that was one thing that I found. I also found that when I'm hiring people, I hire now. I put way more emphasis on their values and their fit and their, whether or not they're a team player, those kind of things, than I do on the hard skills. Now, if you're going to hire someone for sales, they really need to have a sales background and have some success. But if you show me a superstar sales guy who's hopped companies five times in the last year, and you show me someone who's maybe a rung below that, but I can just tell the values, the, 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 the morals and all that, the ethics are a better fit. I'll take the guy who's a, a rung lower and I'll make him a superstar because I know he fits with our team. Because when you start building a team, the one thing that is often overlooked is you can assemble a team of superstars, but if they're all prima donnas and backstabbers and gossipers and all this bad, all these bad things, your team is going to crumble. You have no cohesiveness. There's no glue. You need a team with a good culture. And if you have a good culture, you'll find, and this was huge. This was a huge learning curve for me being a Gen Xer, a guy who, you know, children, child of the eighties, I assumed money would cure all. Everything. Right. Right. If I just pay them I, more or pay them pay better. Them yeah. 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 They'll be super motivated. Not yeah. true. And, and certainly generations that came after me, the pay is less important to them than a feeling of being challenged, a feeling of being appreciated, a feeling of working for a company that stands for something more than just creating revenue. All of these things have way more to do with whether or not a person enjoys getting up and going to work and coming to work for you and representing that company, or they're just coming there for a paycheck. If they're coming there for a paycheck, there's a good chance they're leaving for a paycheck at yeah. some point. So yeah. that was huge for me. That's a, that's a really big point is that I talk about uh, building a culture and like, what does your staff or team, or for that matter, your community, what do they want? They want grace. And, and yeah, we're, we're talking about grace in the terms of, of patience and, and a gap between that and frustration or anger, or, you know, just grace in general, uh, which is, is just this like permission. But, but grace is also an acronym. And, and grace is an acronym. What do they want? They, generosity. They want generosity. They want a, a they want a culture of generosity. They want an excuse to be generous. They want a generous leader, and not just generous with time, and not just generous with money, but but truly the spirit of generosity, right? Which is just giving massive value to each other. And then the R is recognition. You know what? People will leave you if they are not being recognized for their accomplishments and what they've done, and especially salespeople. Yeah. Salespeople seem to be driven by recognition, maybe even more than anybody else. But you know what? It's not just them. The person who answers the phone wants recognition. They want recognition for what they've done. When they make a good call, you got to notice. 
Here's the flip side. Recognition isn't just recognizing the positives. Recognition is also like coaching them and helping them go through the mistakes and the failures and the, and the mess, missteps that they have because that's, that's you know, recognition as well. And then the A is appreciation. Everybody wants to be appreciated, but the people who really want to be appreciated are the people on your staff, the people on your team, the ones who make it click and, and make you a success, a success or the company a success. And then the C, everybody thinks, what's well, compensation. Well, no, not necessarily. What they really want, and they will choose this over compensation every time, is community. They want to feel a sense of belonging, a, a sense of being part of something special, a, a sense of, you know what, we're making a difference, we're solving a big problem for the world, a, a sense of belonging and a community. And then the E is, is a big one because I see this, especially in the real estate world, it used to be, oh, you can fog a mirror, you're hired. <laughs> and and it, you didn't have to do anything. As long as you were not a cadaver, you could work in the real estate and all these, all these brokers would take them on because it was all about head count and numbers and, and all that. But the E is very important. And, you know, this is still a niche in many arenas that, that you can differentiate yourself from the others and it's exclusivity. You know what? You got to be special to work here. You've, you've got to go through a discovery process. You're going to go through a disc test. You're going to go through strengths finders. You're going to go through two or three interviews. And at the end, we're going to eliminate all the others. And you're going to be picked because you're special. And you're part of this exclusive opportunity that it is to work on this staff and on this team. And, and we talk about, like, this is the grace of culture building and people want grace. They, they want those five things in a business. And if you have grace, your staff will refer you all the people you'll ever need to, to grow your team. And, and I, I'll tell you, I, I don't mean to go on that tangent, but, but you triggered it because that's, you hit it, you're building it, you're living it. And, uh, and I love that. I love that too. I, I love that acronym. And if I could introduce one more quick concept of something yeah. I think it's really, really important too. And this is this goes for your personal life, not just business. It's something I call the relationship bank. I talk about it in my book. And the long and short of it is all relationships are like a bank account. You put in credits and you remove, you take out debits, right? With a person, any relationship, it could be a coworker, it could be someone who works for you, it could be your wife, could be your kids. If you withdrawal from that account more than you deposit you there will be a bad relationship there okay so my case in point is your kids right i don't know how old your kids are michael mine are a little bit older mine are in their 20s now 11 okay yeah. So your 11 year old, if you have to scold him or discipline him or punish him for something that he did wrong, he deserves it, he did it. He doesn't immediately truly believe you don't love him. He doesn't stop trusting you. You know, he knows you've built up all the good things that you've done, the time, the baseball, the coaching and all the, all the great things. You have put more credits into that account than you've withdrawn from it. So when you have to withdraw, it's okay. He knows you love him. It goes the same way for building a team. You hire someone day one, you start criticizing them, you start coming down on them, mm. they're gonna get out of Dodge. They're not gonna mm. stay there. Now, if you have a, an employee who you've just tons of credit, you're talking about their, you know about their kids, you know their wife, you know, you're, you show interest in what they do outside of work, you have this real relationship with them, and then something happens where there's a little bit of a, a rift or maybe something you have to kind of get into that's uncomfortable, they don't immediately think, I'm quitting, I hate this place. They mm -hmm. go, Hey, this guy loves me. He has a long history of being generous, having grace, right? Mm -hmm. But hey, we had to get through this little thing. It was a problem. We did it. That's the bank, the relationship bank, the relationship account that everyone needs to pay attention to. You cannot just withdraw as a boss or an mm -hmm. owner or a leader. You better make uh, deposits or you're going to have trouble with your team. Wow. That, uh, that is so profound and uh, amazing. And it's so true is, is that, you know, I, I've always said that relationship is a value exchange, right? And that, that's it. I mean, it's nothing more, nothing less than a value exchange, right? And once you quit exchanging value, there is no relationship there. And, and, and it, it doesn't matter how long that relationship has been, how short, it, it's a value exchange. And we need to learn to give massive value first yeah. to start building these relationships. But why don't we do that? Well, we're not sure if it's going to be reciprocated. 
And, and the, the thing that I have to say on that is don't worry about it. Just keep giving massive value first. Don't expect anything back. But when it does come back, be an appreciative receiver and don't be the one that throws their hand up and go, oh, don't worry about it. Because trust me, they won't. But we need to be an appreciative receiver when, you know, when, when, the, uh, when the gift comes, when, when the give comes back to us. And uh, you've, you've hit on that lesson. I, I love that. And, and I will tell you, uh, you've got a phenomenal gift for our listeners today. Uh, they're able to get a free copy of your ebook. Let me make sure that's right. Level jumping, you're going to give the whole book to them, not a chapter or two? Not a chapter or two. I'm going to give them the whole digital download, the whole Are you sure you want to do that? That's, that's crazy cool. I mean, that's, a, that's an amazing gift, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, you can text just start to 55444 and you will re- receive the entire copy of Level Jumping. You can also find that later on at referralspodcast.com. But to get that right now, just text just start J U S T S T A R T to five, five, four, 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 and you will receive the PDF copy of level jumping. And uh, this is straight from the author. And this is Mike Simmons, who is the author of level jumping. He's talking, he's, he's talking about going from a yeah, butter to a level jumper. And uh, you want to be a level jumper. You want to be the one who, who achieves your goals and you know, your 10 year goals in a year. And he's shown, he took, he took a mentor and a mastermind's advice and he took a four year business and did it in one year. And he did a million dollars, a million dollars in profit, not a million dollars in sales, but a million dollars in profit. So very, very powerful information today, Mike. I really, really appreciate this. And uh, you, you knocked it out of the park, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is a lot of fun. I love being on shows with people who are as passionate about helping people as you are. It makes it so much more fun. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. You know what, before I sign off, you have a podcast. I do. Tell me, tell me about your podcast real quick before we sign off. Will do. Thank you. My podcast is called Just Start Real Estate. Uh, and it's called that, that Just Start part of it is really a crusade. It's really my mission now to get people off their butts and onto the playing field. And I think sometimes it's the hardest thing for people just to get started. And when I got started, I told you, I'm, I'm not a super like outgoing necessarily by nature. So I had questions that I, I wanted to ask, but I was afraid. I was intimidated. I thought they were dumb. I wanted to have a platform where people could get real answers, uh, questions answered by real investors and have a safe place to get those answers so they could get started. I spent a number of years on the sidelines getting ready to get ready, right? Mm -hmm. That whole paralysis analysis. And I don't want to see people do that. So I created this podcast to help people get off their butts and get out there and get going. Yeah, I used to have this round to it right? Because it was like, you know what, I'll get around, you know, I'll get around to it. Or you know what, I'll get to it when I get around to it. And I gave him around to it. It was literally a coin that said to it on it. And, and, uh, and and sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, most of the time it didn't. But, you know, there's a quote out there, you know, you you don't have to be great to get started. But to be great, you have to get started. And it's one of those where, you know, just start. I love it. It, it, It's akin to, you know, my favorite quote, that I say all the time, which is just simply do it now, you know, do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now. That you just start, just start, just start, just start, just start. Perfect is the enemy of done. You know, yes. perfect is the enemy of get started. And it's like, we just need to get started. We need to just start a uh, step ahead. Uh, today, I truly believe we gave a ton of people, a ton of information on, on how do you take that next step to jumping levels from, from going from one step to step three, you don't need to necessarily hit step two. You know, you can, you can skip a step. And the way to do that is, is by listening to mentors, joining masterminds such as Mike runs and we run. And the bottom line is that you're going to be able to make somebody else's hindsight, your foresight. It is 2020 hindsight is 2020. And uh, with foresight, uh, their their hindsight becoming your foresight. Now you have a clearer vision of what you want to accomplish and you have 2020 vision for your future and, and where you're going to go with your business. And today's guest, Mike Simmons, just hit it, hit it out of the park with this. This has been a great one. I hope that people will subscribe to the podcast after hearing this because this is the kind of material that we deliver all the time. And uh, you also need to go check out Just Start, his podcast. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, he's given you his book, Level jumping. You can check it out by texting just start 
to 55444. Or you can check that out at referralspodcast.com where we have all of the downloads from all of our shows, 139 episodes. You know, we're getting ready to start season two and uh, we appreciate you listeners. Thank you so much for being listening today on Referrals Podcast. And Mike Simmons, thank you for being our guest. Thank you for having me. We'll see you next time, everybody, on Referrals Podcast. Remember, subscribe. Please rate and review Referrals Podcast wherever you listen and download that. And please share it out there on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or wherever you participate in social media. We appreciate you. We love you. We'll see you next time on Referrals Podcast. Thank you.